Greetings everybody, Retro Indie Gamer here for RIGs and for Nintendo Wakeham's Retro Indie Gamer. And today we have a good classic, the, orig the original Legend of Zelda on the NES, and on the gold cards to, to boot. They can't show because, you know, I think the NES cartridges are, and I don't want to ruin it why I have set up here. So let's start the game. Here we are. The original Legend of Zelda for the NES. This should take long to get through, because the original game is not very long. Register your name. Let's see, I'll register under... Let's be original, Link. <laughs> I mean, the name, the name doesn't really matter. It's never used at all in the game, and he's referred to as Link at the end of the game, so... Sorry about the spoiler, but it's also a, this is also a 30-year-old game. <laughs> it's dangerous to go alone. Take this with pleasure. And as you, know, you might notice, I've I decided to change my layout a little bit. Yeah, I'm mostly testing something. Okay, now let's kill enemies. Now, normally, most people probably go straight to the first dungeon, but I don't do that. I usually like going around and gathering rupees for a while first. And most of the time I get some bombs. The bombs in the game, that is. <laughs> so I can get some, some of the extra heart containers and get the white sword. Yeah, the sword that's only appeared a couple times throughout the duration of the series. Ouch. Die, Leavers! You know you give a lot of money. You know you give us a lot of money. Whoa. Well, this one give me a bomb so I can get an extra heart container. And also, I noticed that when you have three hearts, they tend not to last long. <laughs> now this game's a blast to play. <laughs> and a lot of fun to play and a lot of fun to play over the years. Okay, I might want to save there. That's why I have this nice second controller here on standby. Yeah, it was the cheap it was the it's the piece of crap controller that my, that my Retron 2 came with. Yeah, Hyperkins makes some good type, makes some good machines, like the Retron 2, and I'm tempted to try Retron 5 at some point, but then they make things like, yeah, but then their controllers often suck. Yeah, their controllers are often really crappy in quality. Jump over here. Yeah, they often have really crappy controllers. <laughs> die, Libras, die. Yeah, so I got an actual controller from back in, I got an actual NES controller to play with it. Yeah, I tried the Intel aftermarket ones, but they didn't last long. Interesting how the original controllers still work after well, let's say this controller was made at the end of NES's lifespan, and the last NES game came out in 1995. So at most, this controller is 21 years. So at the very least, the controller is 21 years old. At most, 31 years old. So it's so it's been around a while. Ouch. <laughs> and while I'm at it, I'll probably grab some rupees for the blue ring too. Oh, bombs! Thank you.
Man, I love the, man, I love the Zelda music and the games. Yeah, because I haven't. Yeah, this is one of the few series where I have in some form every single game. <laughs> Take any one you want. Now I wonder if anyone's ever ran the potion. I hope not. <laughs> in any case, I'm going for a heart container because why wouldn't I go for the heart container? Because the potion you can get, po you can get the potion anytime you wish. Man, I love that music. It's going through. Take any one you want. Again, who takes the? Again, has anyone ever taken the um, potions to the bombs? Okay, I know someone's done it. Someone's had to have done it. It's a secret to everyone. Everybody. He's basically bribing Link. <laughs> yeah, I think men in Japanese want to make it more clear of that. Basically, um, the Moblin's paying Link to not tell him where he is, so... I wonder why there's always Moblin's hiding everywhere anyway. Are they... Does, did they desert Ganon's... Did, did they desert Ganon's army, army or something? Yeah, it's probably exactly what they did. They deserted Ganon's army. And I'm sure he doesn't take kindly to deserters. Especially not the one seen in a later game. Holy crap. He definitely wouldn't doesn't take kindly to deserters. Show this to the old woman. Thank you. I'll use this for lots of potions, mostly towards the end of the game. <laughs> now for more extra rupees. And kill Tektites. The enemies have been in most of the Zelda games. Ouch. Now be a good time to save. Or at least press the continue button. It is a secret to everybody. Now I get a hundred rupees. Thank you, thank you, sir. This money will go to go really to good use. Pop an A on controller two, continue on controller one. Do that or just die. Now I don't plan on dying in this game. That wasn't that's not in the game plan. <laughs> now first thing the first, I need some more bombs before I go into the first dungeon. I'll see as many rupees as I can get. Literally, the maximum amount you can get. For a little item that will go a long way later on. Come over here, Tektite, so I can kill you. Gotcha, sucker! <laughs> it's my told I've played this game a few, a few times. Yeah the, yeah, the original Zelda is the only one where I really... where I can really play a whole bunch of... Where, I play this game on a fairly regular basis. Mostly because it's not that long, I can usually be in a couple of hours. And it's fun to see what I can do differently every single time. And all the different things I can discover. Okay, I need some bombs to make exploring all the dungeons a little easier. The hell is that? Probably nothing. <laughs> Classic Zelda music. Ouch. Good time for you to die. Come on, give me some come on, some more bombs so I can get through the dungeons. 
or okay, or at least have an easier time of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what is Zora? River Zoras, no, or as they were called when the game first came out, Zolas. Thank you, Japanese translations. Because they pretty much use the, because they use the L and R interchangeably. Yeah, it's the same thing. The thing of names. Hold on. Anyway, oh crap. Time to save. Yeah, this is flat saving time. Anyway, now you can probably get some more rupees. So I can get the so I can get the blue ring early. That'll save us a lot of trouble later on. And time. Especially against some of the bosses. But man, the amount of time that I've played this game over the years, and seeing all the different things you can do every single time. And the only one, only Zelda game that can really consider open world. Because you can do anything and complete dungeons in any order. And none of the later games really do that. Yeah, the NES levels are different are definitely a different animal from the ones Link to Pass on up. Not that they pay against the ones Link to Pass on up. I mean Link to Pass is my second favorite game in the series. Oh thank you. Thank you, Octorok. Yeah, I might make a list of my favorite um I might make a list of my favorite and least favorite of lit ranking all the games from favorite to least favorite eventually. So which is which is really hard to do for the Zelda games because they're all good. Boy, this is really expensive. I'll say, yeah, because he because the max amount of rupees you can hold is two hundred and fifty five. And this and the most expensive item is the blue blue ring at two fifty. Let's do math on that one. Yeah, pretty much takes all all rupees you can get. Okay, next up, next stop is the white is the white sword. Yeah, and when I started getting the blue ring for prior to getting the white sword, that's basically what confirmed to me the way they they of color in this game. Basically, I, I discovered that because I sort of caught into this and looking at the um, outfits of the shopkeepers, especially once you get the blue and red red rings, their outfits change too to the same color, which basically confirms to me that they you that the way the blue ring works in programming is that it replaces everything; uh, it changes the color of everything of that particular color. So I assume that the color stores a variable somewhere that's changed whenever you get the, whenever you get the blue or red ring. The red ring I don't get till the end of the game. Most because you can't get to can't get to level nine prior to completing all the dungeons. Yeah, that's the only one. That's the only dungeon you have to complete in order. Yeah, I always like in the white sword early. Before getting to the first dungeon. And as I also mentioned, I'm only going to be playing for the first quest on the stream. Second quest, maybe at some point, but I don't really play a second quest that often. Okay, tech tight, time for you to die. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, yeah I found what getting the blue ring mostly helps to get past this guy. I, forget, I forgot what they're called. Their, name, their, their names are escaping me. And they look differently in the other Zelda games. But yeah, I definitely should do a list of, all, of ranking my my favorites. Or at the very least, maybe you know, my top 5 or my top 10. 
which beyond that's really hard to do because they're all because they're all good games. Other ones made by Nintendo. Or at least the ones that were approved by Nintendo. Because we have the Oracles and the Minish Cap that were not made that were not made by Nintendo. They were made by Cap those were made by, were made by Capcom. And they had the and they had the help of, I believe, Monolith with Skyward Sword. Another good one. Yeah, I won't say my order exactly, but Skyward Sword is definitely in my top five. <laughs> so is this one. So yeah, I'll be playing some of these for some of these for a while. Yeah, the original Adventure of Link, A Link to the Past. Well, mostly the console ones. Oh, this is a nice little trick, which I'm sure all of you know by now. To automatically unlock the first store once in the, in the first dungeon, just go in and out. Yeah, just go in, go out, go back in, and it's unlocked. Thank you, glitches. Which Nintendo usually does a good job of catching. Maybe not then, but now they certainly do. Like Legend of Fingers Scarred Sword of that one save with the one thing but with the one bug that would screw up the entire game. Which somehow which somehow got past their testing. And they seem very apologetic over it in the fact that they actually fixed it immediately. Unlike a couple of unlike a couple of other gaming companies I can think of off the top of my head at the moment. I'm not naming names, but <laughs> cause if I was list those names I'd be here all day. <laughs> Okay, time for bombs. Another, another key. I forgot, is there a key here? Nope, the compass. The compass is good too. Though you don't really need the map or the compass if you know where you're going if you know where you're going. The eagle. Yeah, I, lo I love the different shapes this game has for dungeons. Some, some more interesting than others. See ya, Stuffos. The only enemies that have been in every single Zelda game. Yeah, look at yeah, look at all of the enemies in the Zelda games. The Stalfos are the only ones that appear in every single game. A title they would have shared with the Octoroks if it wasn't for type if it wasn't for Twilight Princess. The only game they didn't appear in. Which always sounded interesting. They're in every game beforehand and afterwards, so why not that one? Whereas they, whereas they always manage to work the walking skeletons in. It was makes me wonder how Ganon got so many skeletons for his army. Did he freight a graveyard or something? Actually, no, that'd be really demented even for him. Unless he re unless he remakes the remains of his of his followers once they die. Be one way to keep his armies up, to keep his army up, or maybe it was something his predecessor did. The Scarlet Sword villain, who I like, who I like to call to call the Proto Ganon, because that's exactly what he is. And man, there's so many great villains in the series, aren't there? Like, let's see. Oh, obviously, Gan obviously Ganon. And there's also, well, Bati, Girahim, Xant in the first half of Twilight Princess. Okay, see ya, Aquamentis. Hmm. 
Now then, I should probably get some more rubies and get the candle. Before moving on to the second dungeon. Actually, kind of think, but nah, I'll nap on with the third dungeon. Considering a lot of things I need the candle for are around the third dungeon, or around the third dungeon anyway. <laughs> okay, that's moving along. Shooting tech types and all the other enemies that emerge. They've also appeared a lot of games. <clears throat> yeah, and Z yeah, Zelda won the series that actually made a, a successful 3D transition. And also one with, with 3D entries that I really, really enjoy. Unlike, say, Castlevania, where they messed up the 3D entries the first two times. Though, though, they, though they got them right in the PS2. But anyway, that's a subject for Castlevania, not Zelda. And of course, the other series where I feel that where, you know, even though where I feel even though the 3D entries are good, I don't really care for them. Like the like some of the 3D Mario games, such as. Yeah, because I'm not really fond of the um, 3D ones where you collect either st all Star Wars, uh, where you collect all the stars. I mean, they're fun games, but that's... I was never really motivated enough to complete any of them. And I just found recently that, and recently, and just, and just last night, I was trying to play through the DS version of Super Mario 64 again. And man, those graphics, no, not the graphics, man, the controls in the DS version. At least I have a hard time controlling it. No, ones like Super Mario 3D Land and, like, Super Mario 3D Land, that one's good. Maybe World 2, but I haven't tried 3D World yet. Mostly because I don't have a Wii U. And I have no intention of getting one unless I can't get my hands on a Nintendo Switch next year for some reason. Which, given Nintendo's history of making their system scarce as hell, might be a possibility. Yeah, because like for the first, because for the first two years for the Wii, that thing was a pain in the ass to find. Yeah, it was really annoying trying to find that thing in its first few years. And some of you probably know what I'm referring to. Ooh, thank you. Killed one enemy, kill them all. Okay, ropes, come get me. But yeah, for the first couple of years, the Nintendo Wii was really difficult to find. I mean, I didn't get them until what? what until what? 2008? And that was mostly because I didn't have any interest in the thing for a while. Even with Twilight Princess, which, and only because it also came, that one was also released on the GameCube just a couple weeks after its Wii release. And I have both versions now, and I must say I prefer the GameCube I prefer the GameCube version. Yeah, it took a while to perfect motion controls. But interesting how it took, it didn't take any time at all for Microsoft to ruin motion controls. They're stupid connect. But anyway. <laughs> but yeah, the Wii, I remember I got it on, I was able to get it on the day that Super Smash Bros. Brawl came out. Because it happened to be a huge shipment that arrived at, that, that arrived at Best Buy near my house that day. Hmm, coincidence? Definitely not. <laughs> so yeah, I got, I got the Wii and I also managed to pick up a copy of Super Smash Bros. Super Smash Bros. Brawl, which I eventually sold because it's still the game and not the system. I still have the system somewhere. <laughs> okay, I'm getting ready to fight the Donga. 
Yeah, and only, and the only reason I got rid of Super Smash Bros. Brawl was because of the was because of the thing about it, because its discs, its disc barely worked. No, the dueler, the, the dueler disc it uses had a lot had a lot of issues of old release. Dun, 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 dun. And I mean a lot of issues with the, with the older Wii's. Hmm. I have a lot of rubies now. Now I get the candle. And purchase a few things before the next dungeon. Okay, well, mainly let's burn a few bushes and get some rupees. <laughs> Die! <laughs> yeah, hopefully, yeah. And of course, Nintendo seems to like making their making things of theirs hard to find. Because all I have, to, yeah, all I need to say for proof of that is amiibo. Because man, some of those things are hard to find, and there's not much a reason to. I mean, I have a couple of amiibos on my on my dresser behind me, but <laughs> anyway. <laughs> And Nintendo is definitely the best luck when it comes to consoles. Their failures are few, with one of their main ones being the their main one being the Virtual Boy, which they killed within a year. Then the um, and then of course we had the Wii U, which it's surviving, I guess. Oh, there it is. But only but it's only barely surviving. <laughs> yeah, the Wii U was basically basically I see I, I see a lot of people compare it to the Sega Dreamcast. And that could be their Dreamcast. No, the, I feel the Wii U is more like their Saturn. Because a lot of Sega's failures went back to the Saturn. There we go. <laughs> take anyone you want. Again, who in the right mind would take the potion? Maybe someone who really needed the extra help. Maybe someone who really needed the health power up. And then it'd be better just to wait a while and just get this. Yeah, to get the extra heart container, which should, which should help. <laughs> die, Actorox, die! But yeah, the Wii U, I know, so, so a lot of similarities between that and the Sega Saturn. And they had, they had a lot of similar issues, like issues of third party support. And the Saturn also had an issue where games were, de were difficult to develop for it. Okay, just to be safe. Okay, just as a precaution, I'll get a potion. Buy medicine before you go. Thank you. Thank you, Oli. And not use it right now. Yeah, just as a precaution. I don't usually need it in level 3, but you never know. Hold on, where's the dungeon? No, where's the... There was a... There we go. The secret to everybody. Yeah, for 100 rubies, that better be a secret to everybody. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. A lot of time grinding for rupees. Which is just something I don't really mind doing anymore because I've gotten used to playing a lot of RPGs. Ow.
Okay, next up. Man, I me I still remember the first time I the one of the first the first time I ever played this game. On the Game Boy Advance. Okay, the third dungeon, the colors always seem weird to me. They're, the link really stands out no matter what color he's wearing at the time. I wonder if something to do with the it probably has something to do with the color of the dungeon. It's been like that in every version of the game I played. And I played every version of it at some point. Yeah, I played it on yeah, here on the NES. I've also played I also had the Game Boy Advance version for a number of years. I played the GameCube version. Okay, Dark Knight, I'm going to the next room. <laughs> now, those enemies have stayed away for a while after the first game. Yeah, after Zelda 1, they didn't show up again until the Wind Waker. And that was many years later, anyway. <laughs> Dark Nuts. See ya in hell. Especially the blue ones. Oh, I hate the blue Dark Nuts. Oh, the rat, which also has a thing where the strand is, where the band is usually green, but now it's blue. So yeah. Now, I still remember the first time I played this game. It was on the Game Boy Advance as part of the classic NES series. Those were the days. It took me a while to get through it. Mainly because there were a lot of things I never I didn't get my first playthrough. Because for one one thing, somehow I managed to make it all the way through the first six dungeons without even upgrading my sword. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how I did either. <laughs> I really don't know how I did it. Nor I wish to find the hacks, but that was really difficult to play through, especially when, when I got when I got Dungeon Four. Huh, here's probably the game's most interesting dungeon design. Do I need to say anything more? Though it is worth noting that symbol has a much different meaning in Japan than it does in the West. And in Asia in, in general, because in Asia it's mostly seen as, as a symbol of peace and good fortune. Definitely not in the West. Yeah, it all took was one sicko to eternally tarnish its reputation. Oh, I, the boss whose name I can never pronounce, Amanda Hala or something? Huh, found most of his hand, most of his claws right off. Gotcha. And now I have it one extra heart container. Now, now I have another once I get found have another once I get out of a dungeon. Now it's up now it's time for a dungeon that after this will be a dungeon that I had so much trouble with as a kid. Level four. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Yeah, once you get more and more hard containers, this thing gets easier and easier. And it's one of the few games where I always get max health. Then there are games like you know, this, The Adventure of Link. But most of the other ones, the max health, it, it really isn't needed. Yeah, it's not really needed after, it's not really needed at all. Time for you, okay, time for you guys to all die. Okay, gotcha. Okay, maybe on my way to Dungeon 4, I'll do another thing to bear for, for future dungeons. Yeah, most of all games, yeah, you're, you're able to collect all these heart containers, which is good to, just, to, just to kill some time. 
But oftentimes, you don't need them. I usually, okay, I always usually end up getting a couple of them, but rarely max health. Especially in later games, because it feels like some of the boss, end bosses get easier and easier. With exceptions like the end boss of Skyward Sword. Holy crap. Now, Demise is pretty difficult the first time playing the game. Just get the right potion, and he, though if you get the right potion, you'll make short work of him. <laughs> Only friends who cast his legacy on the, on the series forever. Even this far in timeline. <laughs> now, there's something I used to make a lot of videos of back in the day. Yeah, now I've not my proudest moment on YouTube. So it was, it was all it was all fun. At least uh, at least for me it was mostly mostly good fun. <laughs> but some timelines for itself got interesting. And seeing people still trying to make even with Nintendo actually confirm making their own. Though the thing they came out left field for their actual for the official timeline is that third split. What the heck, like, what's the point of the third timeline split, Nintendo? It could have easily worked up two. The one reason I'm guessing is so they can fit more games in. You know, ironically, both of the games that have been made since Skyward, since the timeline reveal, have been on the downfall timeline, which contains the original game, and most of the older games, actually. Yeah, it almost sounds like it's done to basically so they can make the newer stuff without really affecting any continuity with the old stuff. The only thing though the only thing I would like Nintendo to fix someday, or at least explain, why Ganon is alive in the original game. Because in the, because this has been a problem ever since Link to the Past came out, where he clearly died. Though we had the Oracle games that, though years later we got the Oracle games which take place between them and as resurrected, and, and it was definitely a matter of question whether or not he survived there. Then a link between worlds came into the picture many, many years later and confirmed, and basically was really irritating because it more or less confirmed Ganon survived the fight in the Oracles, only to die there. It's like seriously, Nintendo. Like you bring, him, you basically confirm he survived. His, he survived the oracles only to kill him there. Just said to say a tree original game. Then focus all your attention on the other two timelines. I mean, I, I personally would like to see them continue the story of the timeline following the Wind Waker. I mean, all I got were two handheld games. Though both of which were, were really good, one better than the other, but <laughs> yeah, because I like because yeah, the two yeah, all they had all they had to continue the Wind Waker story are the two DS games, which as I which as I said are really I think are really good. I mean, for example, Spirit Tracks is one, is one is one of my favorites of the handheld Zellas. Yeah, not my favorite, but, but yeah, that's a the favorite's actually a close tie between. More or less a three-way tie between the Minish Cap, Link's Awakening, and A Link Between Worlds, but Spirit Tracks is up there. It fixed all the issues its predecessor had. While still using more or less the same engine. And one of the few times where he actually plays Zelda. Boy, it was really expensive. Yeah, so that's why I'm getting the cheapest thing you have. The bait. Very useful later in the game. Okay, useful. I mean, by useful, I mean I mean crucial to be in the game. Okay, next time to fight Bliak in level four. Man, I always you know I always found two of the especially in the earlier playthroughs. I always found two-headed Bliak to be the hardest boss in the game, even harder than the four than the four-headed one, and definitely harder than Ganon, who's not that hard at all. At least not once he's not once you figure out how to beat him. 
Okay, die things that break into vats. Into vats. <laughs> yeah, I love this game. And I'll probably be able to talk more about my experiences with the series later on. I mean, I absolutely love this game. Okay, time to get up here. Okay, time for you all to die. Yeah, somehow, somehow in previous playthroughs, I was able to get up through, up through here and up to level 6 with just the wooden sword. And to this day, I still don't know how I did it. I died a lot, I can say that. But the original Zelda, yeah, this is one of those few games where I could probably take any save of it. And probably finish the rest of the game from that save. Yeah, that, that's, that's one of the few games I can... Oh, what, the, what the hell does do? Okay, that was stupid of me. I kill those things and I don't even get the lot because I don't I don't even get the ladder. So yeah, the, for this part of the stream I'll probably stop after this dungeon because it's ha it's halfway through the game. I figure that's enough. And I'll fin I'll get to the other half later today. Yeah, and tomorrow I'll probably go to Zelda Two, which might take a while. Because Zelda 2 is also pretty good. But I'll say that for tomorrow. Yeah, and the only direct sequel the original game the original game has gotten up at this point. And I hope it gets another one someday. I really hope so. Or at least a game that follows that story that follows that arc. That story arc. Left by this game. Well, the original two games, yeah, I can definitely understand why Nintendo plays these games at the end of the uh, at the end of the downfall timeline. And hell, they've been they've always been at the bottom of the timeline. Mainly, probably mainly because they have a strong sense of finality to them. Yeah, because Ganon is gone and his legacy is and his legacy is yeah, because basically because Ganon's gone and so are most of his goons. Now the events between the first two games are something I'd like to see Nintendo try to address in in the future games. Mainly the thing when the Triforce was split. Yeah, I'm guessing it happened at some point after a link between worlds, because that's when they had the entire Triforce in their possession. When the royal family has a whole Triforce in their possession. Okay, see it. Okay, Gliok. Let's see if I can kill you without using any potions. Yes, I can. Yeah, I think one main reason I had so much trouble with him is because for years I would always go on top of him and stab him from behind. Until I found that that did not work. It took the NES Remix on my 3DS, of all things, to, to help me figure that out. Okay, I'll get the um. Okay, I'll get the um. The third. I'll get the final. I'll get the final heart container, and then I'll end the stream. Yeah, Legend of Zelda, a lot of fun. Yeah, I just realized, interesting water texture. I know, granted it's the NES and they had limited graphics capabilities, but still interesting. Yeah, and I'll try to avoid killing enemies because I don't need rupees. Actually, I could get one more. I could get one thing right now for rupees. Some arrows. 
those were useful only with a couple dungeons. Actually, I'll see what I did last when I did when I was doing a plot to test play for this on my 3DS the other day. Yeah, I'll go right from this to, yeah, after I get the uh, ma the magic sword, I'll go get, I'll go right to level 6. To get the hardest dungeon in the game out of the way. Stupid whiz ropes. There's also a dungeon where I might consider getting the magic shield. I usually don't bother getting the magic shield, mostly because I, especially because the only time I usually have enough rupees to get it is dungeon 9. And at that point, I usually need it for a couple of other things. You know, in level 9, I usually end up running into lifelikes. Buy something, will ya? With pleasure. After I drop off a cliff. Oh, I do have enough for a magic shield, too. Buy something, will ya? Okay, Link has a shield. And interesting, interesting how Nintendo often is, is notorious. They're notorious for censoring anything related to religion. Yet, this cross is on Link's shield. Explain that one, Nintendo. Then again, given the amount of religious stuff that Castlevania's gone with over years, they probably figured they can throw them a few things on their, on their own. Well, that's all, that's all I'll play for Zelda right now. That, that's the end of the stream, guys. If you liked it, feel free to, well, tune in later for some more Zelda. And other games I'll be playing over the course of the week. Well, until next time, everyone.